Hello, Taiwan. Over the past several years, I have been collecting data on all of the drownings that occur in Taiwan from the National Bureau of Statistics, the National Ministry of Health, and also the National Fire Association. I then took this data and sent it to an epidemiologist or public health scientist in the United States who analyzed it and came up with some findings regarding risk of drowning in Taiwan. In this video, I will go over those findings. We'll talk about the trend of drowning to see if it's increasing or decreasing, and also break down the deaths by sex and age group to try to make some determinations about who is at risk and where they are at risk and to come up with some recommendations for how we can reduce the risk of drowning in Taiwan. But first, before we get started, please go down to the comment section and answer these three questions. One, who is most at risk for drowning in Taiwan? Is it men, women? What age group? Please write the sex and an age range down in the comment section for who you think most often drowns in Taiwan. Two, is the drowning rate increasing or decreasing? What's the general trend for drowning in Taiwan? Three, where do people drown? Is it in the ocean, in rivers, lakes, swimming pools? Let me know what your guesses are down in the comments and then we'll go over the data. It's important that you answer these questions because then we can use your answers to see if there's a gap between the public perception or the data. Please pause the video now to write your answers. And while you're down there, please make sure to check your subscription status and also make sure that you have notifications turned on. While this video analyzes population data, the next next video will analyze individual drownings to see how we can improve safety. So you don't want to miss that. So please make sure you're subscribed. I'll wait while you do that now. Great. Now that you have subscribed and made your predictions, here is where you're right and where you're wrong. I know from conducting my own survey with people on the street that about 90% of you wrote children, teenagers, or young adults are most at risk for drowning. However, this couldn't be farther from the truth children are least at risk for drowning in Taiwan. This graph shows the age-adjusted drowning rate for men and women in Taiwan. The blue line represents males, while the red line represents females. It's no surprise that men have more accidents. We aren't as smart as women. Most of you guessed that correctly. But the real interesting data here is that for men under 35, the drowning rate is actually very low contrary to public opinion. It starts to climb rapidly after that, and there is a huge spike after 65 years old. A 65-year-old male is four times more at risk than a 20-year-old male, and an 80-year-old male is eight times at risk. For women, this is much less pronounced. The incidence rate is very low until about 65, at which point it starts to climb. Knowing who is at risk is important because that is the first step towards prevention. In this case, it's older people, which is very interesting to me because almost every Everybody I talk to gets this wrong. Most people think that young people are at risk. It's easy to see how this perception came about though. As recent as last month, articles that were reporting on drownings during the Dragon Boat Festival holiday, newspapers were citing a 2007 Taipei Times article, which in turn was reporting on a study that used data from 1994 until 2001. That study said that drowning was the second largest cause of death for children aged 0 to 14. Much has changed in the last 20 years though. The drowning rate in children is two-thirds lower than it used to be, and in the past 30 years, drowning is down 80% overall. 80%. That's right, only one-fifth the amount of people drowned last year as happened 30 years ago. When I interviewed people prior to presenting the data, the answers were split pretty evenly between increasing, no change, or decreasing. It'll be interesting to see what you guys guessed in the comments. In this graph, we can see a steady decline from 1990 until 2011, at which point the drowning rate levels off at about 1.5 per 100,000 population. If we zoom in, we can see that the past five years were relatively stable, with men making up about 80% of all drowning deaths. In real terms, this means a drowning reduction rate of about 1,200 deaths per year, from over 1,500 deaths in the late 1980s to around 300 deaths a year today. This is a very impressive public health achievement and also one that I'm not quite sure how was achieved. My instinct says that increased swimming education led to a reduction in drowning deaths in Taiwan, and there is some evidence to suggest that. If we compare the average of the last five years to the previous five years, we can see that the drowning rate among youths has decreased faster than the drowning rate among older people. This suggests that the swimming education initiative, which was implemented about 15 years ago, may in 
indeed be working to reduce deaths. But to prove that would require individualized data, which I don't have. I think it's likely that this is a contributing factor and something to look into, but a further study with individualized data will be necessary to make that conclusion. The third question I asked was a bit of a red herring. The data I collected from the National Fire Association is very interesting. It includes not only drowning deaths, but also successful rescues. It has columns for locations, such as rivers, piers, ocean, lake, and also a column for how it happened, such as scuba diving, falling into the river, a boat overturning, or just playing in the water. And even a column for if the victim knew how to swim or not. But this data is too incomplete to make any conclusions about specific risks of types of activities or locations. Even by really simplifying the data by combining all lake and river type activities into one group and all ocean pier fishing, boat overturning into one group, we still really can't analyze it because 60% of all the accidents are listed as unknown. We get similar results for the activities that led to the accident and also the victim's swimming ability. This data would give us a very clear picture of what and where people are at risk for drowning, but the data just isn't complete enough. To follow up on this, we're going to need better data. The main takeaway here is that elderly people are far more at risk for drowning than young people. To reduce drowning deaths, steps should be taken to protect the elderly near water, such as providing life jackets or increasing the prevalence of rescue rings. Another finding is that drowning doesn't appear to be a major public health crisis. It makes up only 5% of total accidental deaths behind accidental poisonings, which I assume are mostly drug overdoses, accidental falls, and overwhelmingly traffic accidents. In Taiwan, traffic accidents make up about half of all the accidental deaths. This is especially pronounced in young people. Over 70% of all of the accidental deaths for males aged 10 to 29 was vehicle accidents, compared to only 4% for drownings. Regardless of drowning not being a major cause of accidental death in Taiwan, every death is still a tragedy, and we should find ways to prevent them. 326 deaths a year are still a death nearly every day. Further research should be done on this topic. This should be funded research to a university in Taiwan. There is only so much science that can be done without a budget. And I personally think that more resources should be directed towards teaching people how to swim. Elderly people are most at risk, but most of the programs for swimming happen in schools. Perhaps additional programs to reduce risk could be publicly available life jackets and also subsidized swimming lessons for people outside of school as well, such as adults and elderly. Swimming is also a good cardio workout. This may lead to a reduction in other illnesses as well, such as heart disease. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me about two years to get all of the data and people together to make it happen, but I learned a lot and I hope that you did too. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and also joining the channel or supporting me on Patreon to help me create more videos. In the next, next video, I'll be analyzing individual drowning cases and showing you what to do or how to avoid injury or death if you ever find yourself in one of those cases that led to a drowning death. Lastly, I would like to point out that in addition to the 326 accidental drowning deaths that happened in 2018, there was also 275 intentional drownings, which are suicides. This is out of 3,875 suicides that year. Considering how many unknowns there are involving these drowning cases, it's likely that some of the deaths classified as accidental drownings were actually suicides as well. Mental health is health, and mental health care is very expensive in Taiwan. Psychotherapy and counseling are not covered under the national health insurance. I believe that including mental health care along with physical health care would also help to reduce drowning deaths as well as other deaths as well. That's not really the focus of this video, but it's still something to think about. Thanks a lot. See you next time.